Example six, three, example six and seven. So now we'll solve equations when the bases don't match. So we've already gone over um, rewriting in exponential or logarithmic form. Um, we've already done it when the bases match. We can use that one-to-one -one property. Um, so the last two examples we're gonna deal with when we have different bases, we're gonna take the natural log of both sides. So 10 to the x equals 50, the bases don't match. 50 is not a power of 10. So since the bases don't match, we'll take the log of both sides. And I like to use ln because that's a button on the calculator. So we'll go ahead and say ln of 10 to the x equals ln of 50. And the reason logs are useful is the power rule. So the power rule tells me I can bring the x out front. It's the whole point of taking the logs. And that'll make it really easy to solve for x. So that tells me that x times ln of 10 equals ln of 50. ln of 10 and ln of 50 are just ugly numbers. That's all they are. So we divide by ln of 10 just like we would divide by 5. Divide by ln of 10. And then we'll go ahead and calculate. Um, if you don't have a calculator, the scientific one at Desmos is nice. Just go over to function and we have ln, I forget now, ln of 50 divided by ln of 10. And I got 1.6989. Hopefully that was right, 1.6989. So the Desmos one is nice. I'm gonna use the other one just because I can display it with the notes. So ln of 50 divided by ln of 10. 1.6989, and that actually rounded up to 90. And we could check so 10 to the 1.6990 in the original equation. Yeah, and it's almost 50. It's a little off because of rounding, but yeah, it equals 50. All right, let's try one more. So again, we have bases that don't match. We have four to the x and five to the two x plus one. Four and five are different bases. So we're going to go ahead and take the ln of both sides. So we'll say ln of 4 to the x equals ln of 5 to the 2x plus 1. And we'll bring the powers out front. It gets a little messy here. Um, left side, we just bring out x. But on the right side, we bring out that whole thing, 2x plus 1. So x times ln of 4 equals 2x plus 1 in parentheses times ln of 5. So we have to do a little bit more simplifying on this one. So x times ln of 4 equals 2x times ln of 5 plus ln of 5 for the times 1. And I'm going to get all the x's onto one side. They have ugly coefficients, but it's the same as any um, linear equation. So I'm going to move the my, I'm going to move 2x ln 5 minus 2x ln 5. It's weird, but it's the same as if I had 5x and 4x. Just a little uglier looking. So x ln 4 minus 2x ln 5 equals ln 5. And then if we factor the x out, we can solve. So x times ln of 4 minus 2 ln 5. So ln 4 minus 2 ln 5 is just a really ugly number. And then equals ln 5. And we'll just divide by all of that. So divide by ln of 4 minus 2 ln of 5. 
And so I, this is the exact answer. Um, I actually prefer exact answers. So maybe even in the last one, I would have said the exact answer is ln of 50 over ln of 10. But this is the approximate answer. The 1.6690, which is good for checking. So this is our exact answer. It's ugly and it's fine. That's our answer. But we can approximate it as well. So I'll do ln of 5 divided by, and then you can do everything at once if you put parentheses on that ugly denominator. Parentheses ln 4 minus 2 ln 5. So approximately it's negative 0.878. And the only reason I might want the approximate answer is to check my answer. So the left side was 4 to the x, so 4 to the negative 0.878. And we get 0.296. And then the right side was 5 to the 2x plus 1. So 2 times negative 0.878 plus 1. So it's always good to check your answer. Yeah. And we get, sorry, both of them were positive, 0.296. Right, they're slightly different because of rounding, but they're close. Um, but ideally, when we write our answer down, we're going to leave it in the exact form. And that's solving exponential equations. So I think the process is pretty repetitive once you do it. Um, the hardest part is just deciding which method should I use. So it really depends on the situation. So you wanna check, do you, you have the same base on both sides? Then you can use that quick one-to-one -one property. Otherwise, you'll have to use the first or the last option. And so in the final section of this chapter, we'll do some exponential models and we'll have to use these methods to solve them.